I'm Eric Grant from Sailrite, and in this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to put facing strips on clear vinyl window material. This strip has no zipper. This one has a zipper that is hidden from the sun, and on the back side, the zipper is a little bit more exposed, and at the top, it has a zipper that is just simply sewn on. Boat enclosure curtain panels usually have a fabric border or facing that runs around the perimeter. It can be made out of umbrella or vinyl. In this video, we're going to show you how to make your own instead of using prefabricated facing strips. By making your own, you can save some money rather than buying the prefabricated facings. And you can make them whatever size you'd like. We'll also be showing how to incorporate zippers into your facing strips. The first step is taking measurements. This is a sample of an enclosure panel. I'm actually not making it off of any old panel or a pattern. But what I want to do is I want to mark where a zipper would go on each side uh, with a Z. And then typically what you would do is you'd use your pattern or your old panel as a reference to where the zipper should start on the end. And usually zippers start at least an inch down from the top edge so that a binding can be sewn on later on. Uh, but let's just say that this zipper starts at one inch down from the top edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike a line, but I'm going to make that line go a little bit deeper than the facing strip that I'm going to have, and my facing strip will be two inches. So I'm going to go right to here so I can see it, because this mark will come off nicely. So there's where my zipper will be started here along this edge. Over here we're not going to have a zipper, we're going to just have a facing strip, but you would do the same thing uh, to this edge if you had a zipper here. The bottom edge, it will not have a zipper, it's just going to have a facing strip. And the top edge is going to have a zipper. So the zipper that's going to go across the top here, we would use our pattern or we would use uh, our old panel to determine where that zipper is going to start. And for us, we're just going to say it's going to start at one inch. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark uh, at least uh, a little bit more than two inches down so that I can find that location when I put a, 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 a facing strip on. So here are zipper stop, uh, start positions. Anywhere there's a zipper, we have one here and none over here on the sides, you need to remember that a zipper will add a half inch to the overall size of the clear vinyl window material. Here's a look ahead at that zipper sewing onto the side of the enclosure curtain. The zipper, from the center of the teeth, is approximately a half inch away from the edge of the clear vinyl underneath the facing. So if your clear vinyl window material is cut to the desired finish size of the curtain, you need to remember that the zipper will add a half inch to one edge, so you may want to trim away a half inch of clear vinyl if it's to the exact size. Now I drew this all out on paper for this curtain panel and, and the size to cut my strips. And, and everything. We're going to show this uh, on the computer as well. Right now what I want to do is I want to get a measurement of each side of the clear vinyl window material and then I'll write that on this paper. So let's say the clear vinyl window material is cut to the exact size that we want minus the half inch for anywhere there's going to be zippers. Now if, you're, if you have a zipper at the top uh, you don't usually have to add any for that because that zipper can be moved up or down. Uh, we're not making a special facing strip for the zipper at the top. So what I want to do is I want to measure the uh, clear vinyl window material and write all these measurements down. So this is 27 and a half at the top. We'll just do that for all four edges. And now we'll show the calculations for cutting the facing strips to size. So here are the calculations to make your facing strips. You may want to pause the video here to study these calculations. The width of your facings is totally up to you. We're going to use two inches as our standard. When cutting the facing strips to size, remember that you need two, one for the front side and one for the back side for each edge. For our panel, every single side was 27 and a half. And you need, for the top uh, facing strips, we need two of them. We're going to cut them two and a half inches wide uh, minus two inches. So that'll be 25 and a half inches. This is the width of our fabric and I've already straightened this bottom edge. This is what they call the uh, weft of the fabric and up and down this is the running yard. This is called the warp of the fabric. Actually if you cut your strips along the weft, along the width of the fabric, there's less puckering of the fabric. So do you have to cut the fabric along the weft, the width of the fabric, just to reduce puckering? No, you don't have to. 
If you're going to save more uh, fabric by cutting along the warp, you should do that, even though you'll probably get a little bit more puckering. But in my scenario, the length of each one of my strips is less than the width of my fabric, so I'm going to definitely cut along the weft rather than the warp. Now I love to use the uh, rotary cutter with a cutting mat on the bottom side uh, to cut these strips. These are all going to have folded edges or a binding edge. And here at the end, I'm going to basically go across, straight across because it's only a couple inches. So I don't ne necessarily need to worry about unraveling because all edges are going to be folded. So these are my two strips for the top of the curtain. So I'm going to label it top so I don't get confused. Now I'm going to cut the bottom, which is basically the same thing as what I just did. My facing strips will be two inches wide when they're done. So any side with a zipper, this is sides, would be cut to three and a quarter wide by the length plus two inches. This side has no zipper, so it's going to be cut to the same two and a half inch wide by the length, but an additional two extra inches. I want these side facings to cover the top and the bottom facings, and then we'll trim this off in a later step. So these are the strips that have no zip, so I write no zip side on them. We have two of them. You can make a facing whatever width you want. We've decided to make ours two inches. If you want to make it one and a half inches, you can. If you want to make it three inches, or if you want to do a large bottom, you can make it, you know, super big, 12 inches, 13, 15, whatever you want. So our desired facing strips when they're done are two inches. So we've cut uh, facing strips here. We need to, if, they're, if your desired width is something different, you can make it anything you want. Uh, you need to add a half inch to that desired width. That's why these are two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half. For anywhere there's a zipper, except for at the top, the top is an outlayer, you would need to add one and a quarter inches to the desired finish size. So these are cut to three and a quarter. Next, we're going to hem the non-zippered facing strips, and that includes the top facing. For these facing strips at the top, the side with no zipper, and the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strip of fabric and I'm going to place my clear acrylic ruler over the edge making sure that it's a half inch inside that edge all along the length and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an awl and I'm going to crease the fabric so it folds nicely at that location. Now you don't want to press too hard because if you do, you can actually cut fibers. You just want to press hard enough, and you may want to practice on some scrap here that it'll crease nicely at that location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for all of the uh, facing strips. And it doesn't matter what side. This is umbrella fabric. Both sides are usable. Um, so you can do it to either end. Doesn't matter. Either side. Doesn't matter. Um, if you were doing it with a fabric that had a right side and a wrong side, I suggest doing it to the wrong side. So we're going to do that with all those strips, but watch this. What happens now, I start in the middle because I just think it's easier. See how it creases right on there? And it gives us a half inch hem. So this will be the inside edge of our facing strips. Now the outer edge will be covered in binding in a later step. It's not a bad idea to take the canvas patterning ruler once it's creased and crease it well. Because the more it's creased, the easier it is for your job. So we're going to do that with all of those strips, except for the strips that include the zipper, excluding the top. So for all these facing strips on the edge we scored, we're going to put the 3 8 inch basting tape. This is part number 129, except for the side strips that include a zipper. We will not do that. We'll peel off the transfer paper and watch, because it's been scored, look how easily it creases. Just makes it super easy. And then if you want to make sure the double-sided tape sticks well, take your clear uh, Sarac canvas patterning ruler and go over the top of it to crease it well and just get that glue to stick. So we're going to do that with all the strips except for the ones with a zipper. So we're going to take these strips that don't have the zipper and on every single strip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 3 8 inch seam stick for canvas on each one of the hems that we created. And I'm going to keep that double-sided tape about uh, uh, 
eighth inch away from the raw or the folded edge, I should say. Now we're not going to put it on this edge. We'll show you what we'll do with that edge in a later step. So let's do this with all these strips. Now we'll take the facing strip that incorporates a zipper and hem and sew it. So what I've done, these are the strips with the zipper. And I marked, this is the outside one and this is the inside strip. What I want to do is I want to crease the outside strip with my awl at a half inch on one edge and then three quarter on the other. Then with the inside strip, I want to crease it at three eighths inch from one edge and do nothing at this edge. After this one's on, we'll fold this one to match this one. So we're going to crease it at three eighths inch here, half inch here and three quarter inch here. When you're creasing the strips uh, for the zippers, they need to be pretty accurate. Um, the, the inside edge isn't as, as crucial, the, the half inch, the three quarter is. So be sure that you hold your clear acrylic ruler tightly over the fabric when you're using an awl to score it so it doesn't move on you. This is a single pole slider here has a slider on one side so you can only open it on one side. We're going to be using a double pole slider which I think is always a good idea because that way you never have to think about which side the slider is on. But if you're using a single pole slider, the three quarter inch is uh, the fold that will be up a, over the teeth. So the, the zipper is actually going to be sewing on um, like this. And then so to be matched up to this edge and then this will be folded over and then you would have the slider on the correct side because this is the outside and this is the underside. So you want to think about that and you might want to mark the canvas. If you have a single pole slider, you might want to just say, you know, um, slider goes down here. So you could say S D. So the slider faces down if you have a, a polar on this side. Since we're using a double pole slider, we don't have to worry about that. So you also want to be concerned about um, what side of the zipper you're putting on your enclosure. So if your other or opposite enclosure has a starter box on it, then you want to put a pin on the adjacent panel. We're going to be putting a box on this one because we don't have another panel yet to be matched up. Now we also have to be concerned about does the starter box and pin go on this side or does the starter box and pin go on this side? Uh, I like the box and the pins to always be at the top of the curtain, not at the bottom edge. To do this, we're going to grab the three quarter inch folded one and the half inch one. The three eighths we're going to set aside. But what we want to do is we want to fold this under and you want to think about the panel. This is the three quarter inch hem, not the half inch hem. Will the, if the smiley face is here, this is supposed to be the outside, so this is going in the wrong direction. So if I flip it and the three quarter inch is now over here and my smiley face is here, this is where the zipper will be. So this is where I want my box to be. So I'm going to just mark this box. Or if it were a pin, I'd mark it pin. But in our situation, it's a box. So now we've got both these panels, the three quarter inch hem and the three eighths inch hem. And I'm going to flip it up and I'm going to flip this one up as well. And I'm going to put basting tape on the surface that doesn't have the writing. Um, this is the uh, outside surface. It'll be folded under. This is a quarter inch basting tape for canvas. And I'm putting it fairly close to the edge of the canvas. And then on the three uh, quarter hem, I don't want to put it on the half inch. I'm going to put it here. This is the three quarter side. So this is the side of our curtain. We want to measure down from where the zipper starts, which is at one inch. And remember, we have an extra inch of facing that covers this. So I'm going to put the zipper starting at about an inch and a half just to be safe. So I'm going to come over here. This is where the zipper will start, so I'm going to put a mark here with my chalk one and a half inches down. I have extra material, so that's going to be give me plenty of material. So now I'm going to peel off the transfer paper, and this is the end with the box here. And I have this over here indicates if I had a single pole slider, it'd be facing down. 
I have a double pull, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to move the slider all the way to the bottom of the zipper so it doesn't get in the way as I baste this. This will be basted just like this. So the starter box is right on that line and the edge is even with the edge of the canvas. And you want to do this carefully because this is going to have a nice fold. Okay. Then we're going to take this one and we're going to peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. And it is going to be basted so that outside surfaces face each other. Um, there is no outside surface of the fabric, but th this is obviously intended to be the outside. This is the outside. We're going to match up this edge over here and we're going to baste it in place. Matching up the long edge that we just basted underneath. So here's what you get in the end. So when I'm, I'm going to take this and sew it, but I'm going to show you in advance. So what I've got is this is the inside so I can see my zipper nicely. And this is the outside. My zipper is hidden nicely to keep it uh, protected from the sun and also so the other panels butt up to it to help hopefully keep water from leaking through the zipper because it's pretty much covered. There's my starter box. It's sandwiched between the two panels and this is just a tacking stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the foot right alongside that box and then lower my presser foot. And then I'm going to move my needle all the way to the left position which it's in right now and I'm going to bury the needle first by hand and I don't need to do any reversing here but I'm going to try to stay exactly the same distance uh, from the edge of this presser foot to keep this stitch nice and straight. And you might want to put a magnetic guide on the sewing machine, which is definitely going to make it easier to keep it straight. We're going to baste and sew the top and bottom facings first. So, on the clear vinyl, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 3 inch, H in, 3 8 inch basting tape, part number 129, along all of the outer edges, keeping the tape again approximately uh, an eighth inch away from the edges. So we're going to do this with all four sides of the clear vinyl. So once it's on one side of the clear vinyl window material, do the exact same thing laying it on the other side, right on top of the other strip. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate. It just has to be close to that edge. So we're going to start by attaching the top and the bottom strips. So I've, uh, this is the outside surface of our clear vinyl window material because of the bindings on this side. So I'm going to peel off the transfer paper along the top edge. I'm not going to peel off this transfer paper. What I like to do is I like to stick it on first following the edge of my canvas. And this way it makes it fairly easy because uh, it doesn't stick to the canvas because I don't have any double-sided tape exposed on this umbrella yet. So I want, remember we cut these short. You just need to make sure that you have enough to be tucked under the two inch um, facings that will go on the sides. Let's measure this one since it's, yeah, I've got plenty. So even though I'm more over here than I am over here, I still have plenty. So once this is on, then I can peel it up a little bit. And your facing doesn't have to be two inches like we talked about earlier. I can peel off this transfer paper and baste it as I peel off the paper. Okay, so now we'll flip it over and we'll get our top strip, our second top strip. It's labeled top. That's one of the beauties of labeling all these things. You don't have to remeasure anything. Peel off the transfer paper on the clear vinyl window material. This time what I'm going to do is I'm not going to match it up to this edge. I'm going to match it up to this edge. Now I know I have not peeled off the transfer paper from here, but that's quite all right. And I like to start in the center. So I've got it lined up and I'll baste it to this outer edge as each one of these is lined up along this edge. Like 
like that. That looks excellent. Now I can peel off this transfer paper here and baste it down, making sure the edges are lined up. If they aren't, you can make adjustments because it's just double-sided tape. And now look how it covered our zipper. So we'll be sewing through here and we'll be putting a binding on here in a later step. Now, for some reason, this one strip wasn't exactly the right size, but again, we don't have to worry about this outer edge. It's going to be covered with binding. So I'm just trimming off the uh, overhang here. What we have to be concerned about is do these edges lined up, line up and is it flat? And it is. So anywhere there's any overhang, trim that off because that'll make the job of sewing the binding on a little bit easier if everything's flush. Now we're going to do the bottom edge. We don't want to do the sides yet. Same process. We're going to start here at the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my folded edge and I'm going to line it up to the inside of the presser foot here so I can use that as my guide. I am going to leave my needle actually in the left position because I like my stitch to be really close to this edge but hopefully not so close that it's, it falls off of it. And I will sew here. I'm going to do uh, one forward and then a little bit of reversing here just to keep the reversing hopefully underneath the, uh, the next strip that will go along the side. And when I get to the zipper, you need to make sure the slider is already installed, which it is on the zipper. I, I want to go slow because I don't want to deflect a needle here. Now when you go over the zipper here, this is going to close off the zipper, but you want to go slow because you don't want to deflect your needle. So I'm actually going to, you can sometimes just walk it through by grabbing the balance wheel, which may not be a bad idea, but as long as you go slow, usually you won't get any deflected needle. Like there, I'm going through a tooth, so walking the balance wheel by hand actually was advantageous. We'll go all the way to the end, and then we'll do a little bit of reversing, and this reversing will be hidden by the uh, side panel that will go on later. One, two, and we're done. So now we're going to do the exact same thing to the bottom edge. Now if you'd like, what you could do is a, uh, a stitch along this outer edge as well to hold it down and keep it very close to the edge because we are going to have a binding there later on. But usually the double sided tape holds pretty well. If it's not holding, you may want to put a stitch uh, very close to this outside edge so that the binding will cover the stitch in a later step. Our sample enclosure has a side facing that includes no zipper. We'll do that next. This is a side that we don't have a zipper on. However, if yours has a zipper on both sides, the process for installing the zipper will be the same on this side. This side would actually typically be fastened with a, some sort of fastener. Remember, we made it extra long, so it peeled off the transfer paper, and we'll just start in the middle, and we'll follow that same procedure like we did for the uh, top and the bottom edge. Now notice how this covers the top of this uh, facing here. So the reason that we cut it short is that when we sew the binding on, we don't have all this bulk. Um, so that takes away some of the bulk that you would typically have. So we'll put it on this side, we'll flip it over, and then we will put the other side over top of this matching up that edge. We're going to do a little bit of reversing once we get into this panel, but I'm not going to go too deep because I don't really like to have the reversing show up. Hopefully it's going to be covered by the binding. So I'm going to do one stitch in reverse a couple times, and then we'll sew down this edge all the way to the other end, and we will do that exact same thing there. The opposite side of our enclosure panel includes a zipper. We'll be basting and then tacking it in place. This is the outside of my clear vinyl window material. That's because the binding's here and the zipper's on the underside. I don't really need uh, the double-sided tape along the edge for any side zippers on the top or on the outside surface, so I'm going to peel this off. That's a mistake I made, but it comes off fairly easily as long as it's not been baking in the sun. So that's removed, and I'm just going to leave the double-sided tape on the bottom side, which is the inside surface of our clear vinyl window material. So I'm going to peel off the transfer paper of this 
the basting tape on the bottom side and I might just start with a little bit at a time. Now remember, my starter box is here and uh, I have a start position marked here. So what I want to do is I want to transfer that. So I'm going to put a line here where the starter box is on this side so I know where I need to base this uh, so my zipper is in the right spot. If I were had a pattern or if I had an old one that I was copying. So I'm going to put this underneath here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to base this to this edge very close to that stitch that we just made with this. These are lined up, so that's right where we want it. And you can see my stitch under here. And I want that to be basically falling in the same spot along the edge of the uh, clear vinyl window material. And then I use my finger to press it down. So this is where it gains the half inch from the edge of the glass all the way to the zipper's edge that we talked about earlier. Good. So she's basted down. Now we're going to sew right on top of this stitch. Now that's not much glass, but don't worry about that. This isn't the stitch that's going to hold it in place. This will actually come over and it'll be folded back here and it'll be stitched here. So this will secure it well. Then we'll come back here and we'll sew it yet again on top just to keep this flap on top of the zipper. So we're going to put this in the machine and this is a tacking stitch again. And I'm going to lower my foot and I'm going to move my needle to the center position and I'm going to sew again right on top of that previous stitch. Nobody's going to see this stitch and I'm not going to do any reversing. Now notice that my uh, foot is right up against that box. The teeth are going to make it easier to sew. There we go. Now, the, now we're beside the teeth. So you just want to make sure this stays in position. Don't worry about the double sided tape. You can see through the glass that's going to be covered. This just holds everything in place. Next we'll hem the inner edge and then sew the zippered side facing down. We're going to put double-sided tape on this half-inch hem on this side. Peel off the transfer paper and baste it in place. I start in the middle and work to the ends. I find that easier. It's already creased nicely, so it folds right on the half-inch. I'm going to put double-sided tape on top of that hem. Then I'm going to carefully baste it, making sure there are no bubbles. And I'm going to start here at the center here. Now see I've got it creased nicely here, right by the zipper. So I'm going to hold down tight and make sure this is flat and baste it all the way down. We have extra. We're going to cut that off later and go all the way up. And look at that. The zipper is mostly concealed by this. This is the outside surface of the glass. The starter box, or it could be a pin, is at the top of our clear vinyl window material, just like we planned. We're going to flip this over. And now this one is not scored. So what we're going to do is we're going to put double-sided tape on top of the glass, basically right over that double-sided tape underneath. And we're going to fold it so it matches up, because it's actually going to be a different size hem than a half inch. Double sided tape is incredible stuff. I don't know how I do these projects without it. So I'm going to start at the middle and we already have this creased nicely. So I'm going to crease this back until this lines up. So I'm just matching up the edge underneath, making sure there are no bubbles. If I'm off on anything, I'll just take it up again and, and restart. But uh, that's pretty much how easy it is. Now look, when we're done, check for bubbles. It should, should lay nice and flat. And then look at this. This is the inside. So when you go to zip this up, this is the top. 
it's easy to see the zipper and zip it, but yet the zipper is still concealed completely by the elements here. The sun, will this uh, umbrella will protect it. And also the other adjacent panel will come up to it so that water has a hard time finding its way between the canvas. We're gonna put this in the machine and we're gonna sew this inside edge just like we did with the, all the other ones. I'm gonna move my needle to the left position because I wanna get close to that fold. I'm gonna walk my first stitch and then do a little bit of reversing here along this edge. Now there might be a little bit of an argument of saying, why do you have to sew this? I mean, there is a stitch actually holding this together down here and you may not have to sew it. It would actually look pretty good if it weren't sewing, but I mean, it could eventually want to kick over. So I think I'm going to put a stitch here. Um, that's kind of a, I think probably more of a preference than anything else. I just want to make sure that it stays in there well. So I'm going to put this presser foot right up against the zipper's teeth. This is a number 10 YKK zipper. So I'm going to put the, the needle not all the way to the right, but in the center position, just so I have more room for my slider to move back and forth along the edge of the zipper. A little bit of reversing. And then we'll sew down this side. Next, we'll trim off the excess at the four corners. So now I'm going to trim off the excess material that we have on the uh, sides. And we'll do that to all of the four corners. Now don't forget to move your slider back up onto your project. You could always put it on later as long as you don't put a stop here and that will cut this end off. And I'm gonna cut this uh, flush with this edge here, right through the zipper. This is the bottom edge, and we're gonna have a binding come across here. And these two teeth are gonna probably cause us problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, chop off uh, the, the, those two teeth. And that way the binding, when it comes over here, it can go over here and we can actually hot knife the end of the binding. We'll be sewing the binding on next. You may want to use the same color binding as your actual facing strips. We did not do that. Here's our clear vinyl window material. Sometimes it might have a zipper on this side, ours does not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my binding here and I'm going to be cutting it at the two ends. Then I'll do a binding at the top and then at the bottom. I've got my one inch swing away binder installed on the uh, Ultrafeed sewing machine and I'm going to swing it into position. I've already set it up basically so that my stitch is in the right spot. I'm going to lower my foot and what I like to do is I like to sew approximately half inch of the binding even before I get my project in there, at least one or two stitches. So this is the side. What you need to concentrate on when you're sewing binding on something this thick um, is feeding it in, not at this point, because this will kick it away from the edge of your fabric assembly, but at this point. So you almost want it to go in slightly crooked here so that the fabric is fed deeply into this fold area here, the exiting point of the binder. So watch how we do this. I'm going to put this in, and then I'm going to sew, and I'm actually going to do a little bit of reversing. So see how it's, it's being fed into this area here, and I'm actually kind of holding it slightly uh, cockeyed to get it into that edge well. If I were pushing it up here, it would push the assembly away from the fold.
Then when I get to the end, I'm going to do a little bit of reversing. I don't go too deep, just enough to get it locked in position. So now I'm going to cut my binding at this edge. I'm going to just cut it back here. And uh, technically, this just needs to be uh, flush. Um, we're going to have another binding going over the top of this. So I don't need to use a hot knife yet. I'm going to sew a couple stitches. We're going to sew the bottom edge going over that binding and doing a little bit of reversing here. So I'm going to shove that in. And you may have to help push it in because this is pretty thick right here. When you do your reversing, do this carefully because there's a lot of thickness here with the glass and the binding and this umbrella. Do one more reverse. Want to make sure that stays on there good. Sometimes it's helpful to kind of push the assembly into the into the binder, which keeps the binding uh, on the edge of the assembly or the assembly in the fold, I should say. Now we're getting to the point where the zipper is. Remember we took out those two teeth, which is good, so I don't have to worry about running into teeth. And then I get off of this end and then I'll do some reversing here. One or two stitches back and forth. Want to make sure that stays down well. And that's that edge. Now we'll do the same thing again to the top edge. We're using the Serrate Edge Hot Knife. This is the cordless one. We also have one that's corded to seal the ends of the binding to keep them from unraveling. And that's how you finish off the ends. Okay, make sure your slider's on. If it's not, you can put it on now. And then we're going to put a stainless steel uh, zipper stop on uh, the last tooth to keep that from coming off. There we go, now it's in position. So now the slider will not come off. The top edge of the curtain usually contains a zipper, which is zipped usually to a bimini top. If your slider is not facing the right direction, because we want the zipper to be like this, and we only need a single pull slider at the top to zip it onto our uh, Bimini or our Dodger, then all you need to do is cut the end off of the zipper, which I've already done, the stop, and take your slider and put it on the opposite direction. This is a locking slider, so I have to pull on the tab to get it to go on the um, zipper's teeth. So now, the the slider is on the right direction so that I could put my zipper on like this and I can easily grab hold of the puller. So I'm going to flip this the wrong direction so that I can put my quarter inch basting tape along the zipper's flange and then I'll baste it to the canvas in the in the correct location and remember we marked it earlier on the glass well the markings are kind of buried under here. I can't see them anymore. They're supposed to have come out a little bit, but they're probably buried in here. So I need to remeasure my old uh, vinyl window or look at my pattern again to determine where it starts. Since this is a sample piece, it doesn't matter for us. Now, the zipper can go all the way up here past the uh, binding edge. It can go down here, but you obviously want to position this in the right spot and that is determined basically by your old uh, clear vinyl window material uh, curtain or the pattern you made. We're going to put it on so that it's almost flush with this binding edge. So we're going to peel off the transfer paper and there's no reason to hide this because there's already a zipper probably on your Bimini or Dodger. And if I remember right this is about an inch from the edge. So I'm going to baste it here and then we'll take it over to the sewing machine and we'll sew it. Now I can pull the slider down to get it out of the way. 
that, and then I'll just pull it back up and then we'll put another zipper stop on this after we're done sewing. Now, you could put the zipper on like we did here at the top, here at the side. It's really your preference up to you. I just think this looks really awesome and looks finished. Uh, this way it's not as finished, but it doesn't look too bad either from this side or from the outside surface as well. So this is definitely easier, but uh, it's your choice. So I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna put my needle over to the right. I'm ne right next to the zipper's box. So I'm gonna push on the zipper because that can uh, come loose. Uh, it, it's right up against the presser foot. Now I've got one stitch in it. I don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna sew forward and then sew in reverse a few times to lock the stitch in place. Now this will put a stitch on the outside. That's the only negative thing and we'll show you that in a little bit. Now this is a sample piece. If this were a, a good uh, clear vinyl window material, we'd want to cut it right where the zipper ended on the bimini top. Uh, we don't have that for us, so we're just going to cut it right here at the end. Sometimes the zipper may stop here or other places. Um, now we're going to take a stainless steel stop and put one on the last two. So now you could just install all of your zippers like this. In other words, you could have facing strips with binding on and then uh, sew the zipper on like we did here. Um, but if you'd like to do this rather than this, that's your choice. But I think this one here on the side looks just awesome like this. So I like doing these, and they're not too hard to do. Don't go away, the materials and tools lists are coming up next. The facing strips for this enclosure panel were made from Sunbrella marine grade fabric. However, you can use a vinyl fabric as well if you'd like. It is typical to match the binding to the same color as the facing strips. We didn't do it in this video, but that is your choice. If you like this tutorial video, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. We're also showing a video that will show how to install this curved zipper in clear vinyl window material. Then a third video that shows how to install the curved zipper with a permanent screen. If you have any questions about the process, the materials, or the tools that we used, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.